So summer has well and truly arrived to Denmark and I am so excited because I love this time of year. Technically, it's still May, we're in the middle of May, but for me, it's the summer period. One of my favorite parts of the summer period is simply just jump in the car, drive around in Danish countryside and see what happens. I am out to scout a few different locations that could be potentially interesting for some morning fog, but right now I come past like a couple of rapeseed fields on either side of the road and I am photographing in this direction here. Now, one of the secrets to summer photography is well and truly a polarizing filter, especially when you're photographing in the middle of the day. So the polarizing filter helps you to like darken down the blue sky and it really accentuates the colors of the yellows and the blues in the sky and really makes everything pop. And that is exactly what you want when you're photographing a rapeseed field. What you can also do is actually, and this is maybe like a second thing you can consider if you do summer photography, <laughs> is to do a black and white version because using a polarizing filter, darken down the blue sky really helps making that blue sky black and then make the yellow rapeseed field in front white. That is also a super cool effect that you can play around with. When it comes to this specific composition, I'm using the tractor tracks in the field to lead up to the clouds here in the sky. What makes quite a big difference, you can see I have like a couple of black parts in here where the tractor has probably been driving. So I'm trying to find like an optimal place where the foreground flowers kind of cover up those black parts there. And then I still have the main tractor tracks leading up as leading lines to the clouds there. It also helps actually to create some depth in the photo to put the camera down here. So all in all, I actually think this is quite a nice first summary photograph of the year from Denmark. So it's a little bit funny how I was just in the car talking to myself and was getting a little bit like, you know, desperate because I don't know this part of the country. I have a few points on the map, but I just feel I'm driving around and there's not really any of it that is super interesting. But then I'm driving and then I see a line of trees. And yes, it's just completely simple here but especially this tree right there. That tree really stands out in this row or line of trees along the field. And the field is actually just grass. So I guess I can step out onto it. Not that I really need to. I'm just along the roadside here. But if I go down and get a really nice low perspective right here, I can just throw some of that foreground grass there a little bit out of focus and with an aperture of like f16 or f13 or whatever handheld with the polarizing filter on very important because the polarizing filter does a big job right here i actually end up getting a pretty decent minimalist photo one where i both have a lot of grass in the foreground and one where i just have the blue sky above the tree So one of the things that just makes it rather hard to photograph in this part of the country, or it takes a lot of time to find something of interest, is that it's a relatively flat part of Denmark. And there's always like something in the background. It's very hard to isolate your subject as it is right here. Like I'm literally just standing at a very slow hill, but it makes sure that I don't have forests or cities or towns or 
big masts or other trees in the background of this specific photo. So it's very easy to isolate it without even having to go all the way down to a low perspective. And that is really one of the main things that it comes down to when you're photographing in big rural landscapes like this one here, is to find a perspective that benefits you. So the hard part is not finding the subject because the subject just pops up and then it's there. The hard part is having the patience and time to actually do the legwork. So some just commented on one of my last videos that he thinks that I've lost a bet with James Popsis because I'm doing so much handhold photography. It's on the first Tuscany video. And it may actually come as a surprise to a lot of you, but I actually don't do a whole lot of tripod photography, especially not if I can avoid it. Shooting in broad daylight and with a lot of light, I generally do not use the tripod. I do now because I am in a forest with a lot of beautiful wild garlic, as you can see here. But now shooting at f16, even though the sun hasn't even come down yet, it's up here. Shooting at f16 and upping it to an ISO 320 still have, gives me a shutter speed of one and a half second for this specific photo here. It's not a big problem right now here in the evening because there's no wind whatsoever. So I'm still getting like sharp wild garlic in this photo. I will also try a shot at ISO 100 just to be sure, but it is a four second shutter speed. So even the smallest leaves that are moving, which I can kind of see now with the smallest wind, the, the branches are moving. In regard to the composition, I have right here, you can see, following this line of wild garlic up here and then into this little, well, it's more a mud pool than it's a stream, but nevertheless, I actually do have a pretty nice S-curve through this scene right here. I have a little bit of light coming in from the sun. I'm waiting for that to completely disappear, simply just to not distract too much from this curve leading through the forest. It is quite a hard forest to photograph because there's a lot of stuff going on. And since I don't have the fog to help separate the layers and create the depth and clean up the scene, this is why I usually prefer to do forest photography with fog. It's just not happening this much at this time of year. Then I will have to really dial in my compositional skills and really try to simplify the scene as much as possible, but I don't want to make it like boring, just like, you know, a forest floor with wild garlic and then a few trees popping up. I've done that to death by now. I really want to dial into those interesting compositions. And since this here is actually quite a dynamic forest, there are like small hills and different trees and a few streams here and there, it actually makes sense to try and dial in a composition. It may completely fail for me, Probably, <laughs> but nevertheless, I, uh, I think at the very least this composition here probably works. If you struggle with composition in landscape photography, be sure to get my ebook on exactly that topic. It covers everything you need to know about composition, balance, depth, leading lines, scale, and much, much more. It's easy to read and has loads of examples, so it gets to the point fast. There's a link down in the description. If you enjoy that ebook, be sure to get the follow up too. So I found another composition here that I really like. And again, it is not the simplest of compositions. You should probably be able to see what it is I'm trying here. So I have like this line of wild garlic here, and then I have up here, and they kind of like twist around with this tree here popping up and this tree here. And I'm kind of also including the stuff up here. 
because else I don't get the effect of this line going down here. I will probably have to clone out that branch up there. And I really do not like this trunk, small trunk here in the background. I will probably also have to clone that one out. But the overall composition looks like this here. So something like this. I have also just had a few examples where there was some light on some of these trunks here in the background. I'm not sure I'm going to use those if they take too much of attention away from the wild garlic. But I actually think that this here composition is one that works really, really well. So I actually went to another woodland the other night with Alexandra Amudov. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name, Alexandra. <laughs> um, but there was also a lot of wild garlic there and we spent the late afternoon and evening photographing that too. And I also think I came away with a pretty decent photo from that outing. You can see it here and yeah, generally also a beautiful place for shooting wild garlic. I came to this forest here today instead, simply just because it's closer to home, a little closer to home. And I just wanted to explore it because I simply just stumbled upon this place completely random. I was driving on a road just out there and then I just saw on this gravel road here that there was wild garlic in this forest. So I obviously had to go and photograph that too. So yeah, beautiful, I love Love, May, and some more photography. If you want to learn how I edit my photos, be sure to enroll in my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. Among many other techniques, I show how to focus stack a photo like the one I just showed, how to use luminosity masks for blending, how to clean up your photos, and how to deal with glow and atmosphere. There's a coupon code down in the description of the video if you want to save a bit of money when enrolling. I hope you enjoyed this video and got a little bit of inspiration for some summer photography. As always, I'd highly appreciate both a like and a comment. See you next time.